are listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Giordano. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we've, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Goof on Radio. Occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Goof on radio. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. You're listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordan. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Goof On, everybody. I'm your host, Rich Giordano, and it is Monday, May 1st. April has left the building. She's gone. In comes good old-fashioned May. We still got this light problem. I thought I had it somewhat fixed. Hold on. This is important. I get this. Because if we don't have the right light... Ah, there we go. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Come on. There we go. Uh, what was I saying? It's May 1st. April left the building and good old-fashioned May with her long gown. What are those called? Moo-moo gown? Moo-moos? Poor May. May was hot. Then she had four, four children. It, it reshaped her. And it was hard for her to get back. It was just hard. But here we are. That's right. There won't be roll call anymore. I'm putting my foot down on that. It is uh, taking way too much time. Um, if I could do it in just two minutes, fine. But it never turns out that way. You know, I, I, I have to... I'm really anal when it comes to this stuff not working. There we go. That can't be. That won't not work now. That's good. And, and you know, I you know, and then sometimes I'm wondering why I, I'm like, God, I, I should I should have been able to get through all the stuff I talked about tonight. And sometimes I'll come up short with what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, sure, I can extend the show, but then if I extend it five, ten minutes, then that means uh, then ten, twenty minutes, and next thing you know, we're on four hours, and Rich has got no life. So. I like to do the two hours because we're, we're just now on Monday through Fridays. No more Saturday and Sunday in case you haven't heard the news. Only if I feel like it. Only if I feel like it. And I don't know, I may feel like it, but uh, there's going to be some uh, things happening. You know, I'm going, going to uh, do the ghost hunts. I'm going to be hanging out with Third Phase and Greg. If everything works out, Nathan next week. It, well, it should. I don't see any reason why it won't. So, a lot of interesting things. It's fun. 
It's fun. Yeah. And I'll use all those experiences for the weekend. And then some of it will go in the members and some of it will be on the channel publicly. So that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Other than that, tonight, it's these guys. I feel for these guys. I really do. They get crapped on so bad for nothing. I don't ever see them doing anything wrong at all. At all. They, they go through what I go through. What all the haters do to me, they do to them and versa vice. You know? It is truly amazing that anybody who wants to debunk one of Jeremy Corbell's videos or something from Skinwalker Ranch or the military, it is almost like taboo to these people who attack Mick West, mainly Mick, more than Green Street. But Green Street stepped up his game this, this year, basically. He just started. He's had enough. He's doing what he's supposed to do, report. He's a reporter. He's a, a journalist, investigative journalist at that. And when he gets a story and he finds out that it's not what he was told, a real reporter won't just suck up to the people at Skinwalker Ranch because it's good publicity and good ratings. And if you say there's nothing going on over at Skinwalker Ranch, then my gosh, they'll never talk to you again. Green Street put it all out there and says, go ahead, go somewhere else. Because I'm telling the truth as I see it. And that's that. That's it. That is it. Jeanette Angel throwing down 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Oh, usually it's yellow. You did double it. Jeanette. Jeanette. Isn't that the first one of the night? I think that's the first one of the night. Well, thank you, Janetti Angel, for the 20 pound, 20 quid super dono. That goes all over the planet. The planet. The planet. Thanks, Jeanette. And Jeanette Angel throwing it down with confidence. She, she struck me out. Thank you. That's a good thing. I didn't see it coming. Mucho gusto, generoso, Jeanette. Jeanette. Hold on a second, folks. I, I missed Ozzy Tiger last night. He put down $15 at, at right at the end of the show. It was after Robert Wilhelm. And uh, I don't know if he's here, but it, I'm just saying thank you, thank you for that last night for your Australian $15. Mucho gusto, generoso. Ozzy Tiger. I can't post it because that was yesterday's show. You guys are uh, extreme. Oh, and also Rebecca. Rebecca throws down with, it was an 80 mile, 88 mile an hour fastball right down the middle of PayPal. $8.88, those consecutive, sorry, those similar numbers. You know, they get me right there every time. You know I love those. Whether it be all ones or threes or twos. Really, thank you for that, Rebecca. I'm seeing if you said anything. No. Just seeing if you said anything fancy like, hey, gooey, all over your toes. You know, something like that. But be that as it may. Thank you very much. For the $8.88 PayPal. You can help support the show the same way. Super Chat, Super Sticker, PayPal, or Cash App. All the links are in the show description. And right here on YouTube on the About section. Right here on Goof Arm. You guys are pros. You know what to do. That's how this show survives. That's, that's how I survive. It's to do the show for you. 
Huh. All right, let's get the... Uh, well, I'm going to start off with Senator Gilly Gillibrand. Says that UFO whistleblowers should not worry about a thing. Bring your stories to me. Come on! Tell Senator... J What's her name? Is it Nancy Gillibrand? Tell Jilly your secret. It's okay. It's not okay, whistleblowers. Don't do it. It's not okay. As much as I want a whistleblower story, if you can hear me, do not do it. Do not tell anybody anything. Keep it to yourself. Don't break the oath. We don't care. We know. You can't prove what you're saying anyway, whistleblower, so it doesn't matter. Keep it in your pocket. You're not going to name names anyway. Nobody ever does. They just say, I was in a room where I saw stuff. I'm paraphrasing. I saw alien bodies. I saw three fingers. I saw suction cups on the ends of the fingers. I saw four fingers and no thumb. I saw three fingers and one thumb. Which was it? There were some tall grays, short grays, little grays, fat grays, skinny grays. Fifty shades of grays. That one was obvious right there. That was a good one. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Know what I'm saying? But anyway, Gillibrand is confident that whistleblowers will be safe if they come forward. I don't think so. All right, I, I, I take it back. You know what? I take it back. I think they will be safe too, but I think they'll be harassed. Yeah? Harassed. Don't you know my British accents? All right, here we go. Let's hear let's hear how confident she sounds when she says this is what I love. This is it right here. Ready? She needs to get that hair fixed though. I know somebody. I think that's fantastic that we're finally, you know, taking That's what I said, guy. It's fantastic. I'm trying to this is very low, the volume, I think, so you may have to jag it up a little. Yes, seriously. Let's let's jump back, uh, if you don't mind, for a second uh, to the whistleblower. So as many people may not be aware, you spearheaded, I think it was like 33 pages of legislation on UAP in the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act. And I think one of the most important provisions that that is in there that you guys put in there was was uh, this provision that protects whistleblowers against reprisals and retaliation. Now, sources have claimed to us that they still fear retaliation. Do these claims surprise you at all? No, and um, our office is here to assure them they cannot be retaliated against by law. And if they still fear retaliation, they should reach out to my office. When, when has at least this administration followed the law? They're untouchable right now. It's scary. It's very scary. They will break the laws. They will go against the Constitution. You're guilty until proven innocent. And even though you're innocent, you're guilty and you have no way of fighting it. Imagine living in such a country like that. Oh, eh, that sounds like Russia or Germany, Germany or even China. Doesn't sound like the United States of America that I know. But unfortunately, when you involve the government and the law, they think they are untouchable. It's disgusting. It's despicable. It's actually treasonous. Because we can make sure that they get interviewed by hey. Dr. Kirkpatrick. We can make sure that they can submit any of their data or information in a confidential way. There's no such thing as confidentiality if you're a whistleblower. Um, we can do everything possible to make sure that they can be heard and protected at the same time. Um, you may not know this about my history, but we've been working on military sexual violence for a long time. Right. And we were able to help a lot of service members who That's cool. wanted to tell their story, but were still afraid of retaliation. Sexual harassment is different than UFOs. It's night and day. I can't even believe she's going that route. That's how stupid they think we are. 
you realize that's not even the same thing. It shouldn't even be mentioned. I understand what she thinks she's saying, but it is the worst example you could come up with. It's terrible. Nothing compares to UFOs. So you cannot say, oh, it's just like, you know, somebody who's sexually harassed and they want to report it. And, you know, if they report it, they won't be uh, harassed and, and, you know, they won't be retaliated. You, you can't stop people from doing what they want. Well, no, we said they won't retaliate, so they can't. <laughs> sure they can, and they do. Whistleblowers, stop. Stop. It's a bad idea. I don't like it. As much as I like, I used to like whistleblowers, but not one of them has ever told me anything or have I heard anything that's backed up with evidence? You know, it's almost like listening. It is like listening to Linda Moulton Howe's Spartan 1 and Spartan 2 story. Holy crap. If that story is even a little real. Wow. And you know what? As much as I, I act this way almost negatively it's not that it's just come up with evidence if you want to whistle blow don't do it just because you think you're going to progress disclosure we know all we need to know unless you have names dates evidence to back it up don't come forward it's not worth it this isn't 1990 anymore this is 2023. The world knows about it. People aren't stupid anymore like they used to be. They're dumb, but they've smartened up. They understand what a hoax looks like now. They really do. That's why there aren't a lot of UFO videos. They're hard to come by. Third phase of moon is like, we had a look for like what we got. And it took us a few days to get just, you know, four sightings when... It used to be easy, but we're not just going to post anything. Anybody could post a dot. We don't do that, they said. They won't post CGI. They do everything they can to not do that. Which, by the way, we will look at the video from last night is, oh, so good. From beginning to end, it was, it was really good. It was classic third phase on the upgrade. It was good. So we'll look at that later. But, you know, Gillibrand, I get it. I think she feels pressure to say this stuff. Unless she's told to say it, I don't know. She sounds like she's being herself, though. Retaliation. And we were able to make sure they got lawyers, that they had um, a confidential way of reporting. And we made sure that they were able to do with what their with their testimony that what they wanted to um, whether it was ever public or not public based on their needs so we're here to help and um we're here to make it easier we are going to have a public facing uh website soon um a draft has already been submitted to the higher ups to to approve so as soon as that's approved and i asked all the higher ups when are you going to approve this and um, clearly there's a bottleneck somewhere, but I'm going to get to the bottom of it. And so eventually there'll be a place where anyone can upload data, information, video, photographs, um, and can also see the stuff that's been declassified, which is important so that people can see like, this is how we took this video and this is how we know where it was. And this is the publicly available information. Am I missing something? Or isn't that what Arrow is about? Isn't Arrow supposed to do that? Is she talking about Arrow? She keeps saying we're going to, not being specific. I'm assuming it's Arrow. Information we laid on top of it, and that's why we know what it is. That's important so people can know. It may look like something on first blush, but with scientific rigor, it's not that. Or it may look like something, and we still don't know what it is. So right. The truth is, we will get to whatever facts we can, but there'll still be things unknown. So, and, and let me yeah. let me tell you this: we do not need scientific rigor. 
Think about it. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? What is an astrophysicist going to do when they don't have any evidence to work on? How? I never saw Stanton Friedman do anything. Wasn't he a nuclear physicist? Yeah. Um, there are no astrophysicists or any person that I know of that has a science degree that is a UFO hunter at the same time, probably because they were in school. Nonetheless, uh, none of these people are needed until we get something that they can hold on to, something they can measure, something they can analyze, cut in half, dissect scrape off, zoom in, see through, see in, see around. You know, man, what good are you? You're not, well, when we have these uh, alien abductees, really? Yeah, really, they got the headaches, and that, that. we noticed that there's a pull, a pull, and a, maybe they had a hitchhiker effect, but a pull on one side of the... Where do they live? All right by the nuclear power plant that's over there. <laughs> Where? Oh, that's two miles right over there. Sometimes the wind blows away, but yeah, I know what you're thinking. Do you? Uh, it's a tough, it's a tough cookie. This is a tough cookie, this business we're in. I love it. I love it. And I feel bad for Green Street and I feel bad for Mick West. Just for wanting the truth. They are deemed bad people. They're called everything in the book. Racist, Nazi, homophobic, and so on. Misogynist. So Meb Sala, who gets around on Twitter, says, uh, now let me show you, in response to a Mick West tweet. Just dive into this shenanigans, because that's right, I got to get out of here in one hour. <clears throat> All right, so Mick West says, this looks like a comedian trolling old nonsense, referring to Owen Benjamin down here. But is Flat Earth coming back for another wave? Chemtrails are getting a boost on TikTok. UFOs are waning. Cycles of interest. Same old stuff. Owen Benjamin says, The release of the Nikon P900, which is what I have, camera with infinite zoom is why there are so many Flat Earthers now, by the way. Oh, my God. I've done it myself. Jesus, Marion. Mix talking to a Flat Earther, please. There is no curve. Snipers don't factor in the spin, neither do pilots. Lighthouses would, wouldn't would work at 8 inches at 2 miles. Uh, anyway, and NASA has lied about all of it. Wow. And then that's what Mick West says. This looks like a comedian trolling old nonsense, but is Flat Earth coming back? So what Mick West is saying, this stuff is just recycling this is same old stuff, nothing new, just packaged differently. Now, Mick West hasn't been around that long to know the pattern. So obviously he has heard it. And many people, someone like myself who's been in it a long time, probably told him. And you hear it all the time. It's just repackaged nonsense. It is. But Mick West gets punched in a gizzard for, for saying what's really real. And the flat earth, they're just, why do we deal with these people? I don't understand it. But here's two guys that have done, in my opinion, nothing wrong. Who deserve a little bit of respect, if not a lot.
for what they've done and said. Not that they're perfect by any means. Mick West has made some mistakes. I've even gotten very upset with him. Matter of fact, I think he's okay at debunking. He's not the best. But overall, he has debunked, in my opinion, the gimbal. Maybe not 100%, but the gimbal isn't what we thought it was. And I thought Mick West proved that. I think Stephen Greenstreet said some things that had to be said about Skinwalker Ranch. Now, we've heard people say it, but not somebody who's with the New York Post saying it, where a lot of eyes and ears are hearing it. So when Mick, Mick West, uh, excuse me, so when uh, Brandon Fugel was on there the other day, last week, whenever, and Green Street called him out, everybody lost their mind on Twitter. What a scumbag. That is the worst you're a swine. Remember what Bugle uh, came out and said? Bugle. <laughs> Did I just say Bugle? I can't believe that. That That is so... I just caught myself. I said, I just said Bugle to myself. I like that better. Bugle boy. The Bugle boy says... And he was referencing Stephen Greenstreet. But anybody who thinks like Stephen Greenstreet in bugle's eyes are just like him so that was the same thing as calling us deplorables it's okay if i say it but bugle boy who who holds himself higher than all the rest of us we know it we see it it's obvious calls us all what he really feels it slipped out and it slipped out several times by the way ebay and message from eBay for anyway and it just continues on these guys don't do anything wrong and they're shredded bad but I think I think people really like them same thing when it comes to me and Scambian and Alien Addict and, and all the other girls I don't think they hate me matter of fact I know they like me, but they screwed up and they can sit there and say, we know we get disgusting. Say what you want. I, I see it. I see it in their eyes. Just like people like Mick West and Green Street. They just feel like they have this obligation to say the opposite of what everybody else is saying. Just because nobody's saying it. You know what I mean? It's like the first person to say say the opposite on a viral video. Everybody loves it. Oh, congratulations. And one guy comes out, I wish they'd all be dead, you know, and it kind of ruins the flow. It's the same thing. Just saying it to say it. Because they don't have any proof that anybody hoaxed anything. And um, I know what they were like when we were friendly. Know the shade. Gary P. Nolan posted something. For, oh, my God. Gary P. Nolan's another one. But he deserves it. He's not. I don't consider Gary P. Nolan one of the good guys. I consider these guys the good guys. Not because they're going up against saying what I'm saying, it's because it's amazing that they're saying the same things we are saying and have gone there and been in person or have met these individuals and yet they still shit on them. It's weird. It's almost like it's okay to shit on me because I'm still going to talk about you. So I accept your shitting. It's exactly what it is. I get that. I get the game. It's a game. Now, what am I pulling up here? Here. Charlie Weiser's all over the place lately. It's great. I like Weiser. 
So here we see Mick West, uh, New York. It says, this is killing me. New York Post, where any reputable scientist publishes their findings after they are rejected from the National Enquirer. Mick West says, well, at least it ain't Tucker Carlson. So Gary's talking about Stephen Greenstreet. What is being rejected by the National Enquirer, which is a lie? That's a blatant lie. Green Street works for the New York Post, dummy. Story doesn't have to be rejected from the National Enquirer. It's not even a funny joke. Even if it was a joke, it's not even funny. <laughs> you know? Stupid. Well, that's who we're dealing with. Scares me. This is the ufology we're living in. They, they attack these poor guys for doing their jobs. For the better, for the, what, what do I say? For the greater good of ufology. For the greater good. All right. And, oh, I also wanted to thank Jeanette, Jeanette Angel, for the 13 $12.50, something like that, uh, on the uh, twelve fifty on the Cash App earlier today. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, thank you for that. I wanted to say thanks again uh, in public. So thank you for that. Jeanette Angel, everybody, supporting the car. Thank you. Mucho gusto, generoso. All right, let's pull this up here. Mick West wrong? Sutter Butte's UFO solved and balloon identified on YouTube. What is this? You know, I saw this, didn't watch it yet. Let me make sure the volume is on. Okay. I don't know how it's going to sound because I haven't listened to it here. Here we go. This video by Daniel Wagner looks like it shows a weird shaped UFO shoot past his glider. A lot of people have said it looks like a balloon, but what kind of balloon? And oh why my the God, weird shape? right. I brightened it up, isolated the frames and made an animation so you could see the shape and the design better. You can make out a little bit of what looks like a word starting with H. Then I put out the call on Twitter and on Metabunk's Skydenty5 forum. We were briefly sidetracked thinking it was the Washington Huskies, maybe in the form of a shirt, but then Oswald Hager suggested the word was Hassel and that it was a graduation balloon, so the hunt was on again. A few hours later, Deirdre of Metabunk found the actual matching balloon for sale in an Oregon flower shop. And there it was, 100% case closed. Yet another. That's crazy. Isn't that? Isn't that amazing? And I bet you Mick West is getting beaten up. Let's see what some of the comments are. UFO cult. No, the aliens are only making you think that this is a graduation balloon. Whatever. It never ceases to amaze me how efficiently the internet can crowdsource obscure info. What? The believers need to step up their game. Thanks again, Mick. Oh, these aren't bad. Finally, we have a short from videos for all the short attention span folks out there. This is perfect considering how much false info is spread on short form social media platforms due to the nature of blah, blah, blah. I spent 2000 plus hours flying a balloon, flying at balloon altitudes above LA. I probably saw a loose balloon every day. Sometimes I'd use them as an airborne reference point and have my student fly in circles. Man, holy crap, I love you, Mick. All right. See, you can't deny this one. That's why Mick's getting praise. But you know what it is? People have short attention spans, and as soon as Mick makes a mistake or they don't agree with something, they will stab him in the back. Sad. Those same people will. And they'll go, they'll say something like, man, I thought I could trust you. You, you know, suck, whatever. Why am I afraid to speak? Oh, recently, an amateur astronomer captured a, a stunning discovery of 
three objects nestled in the depths of a crater. You got to see this. I've been getting a lot of moon stuff that I haven't shown yet, but I wanted to make a video, a compilation video, and talk about these things and then put it out. Maybe to the members first. Check this out. We've seen stuff like this before. We've why can't those be rocks in there? Why didn't this guy zoom up? No, you know what I mean? Like, why didn't he pause it and then zoom in in the editor, just enlarge it? You know what I mean? You hear what I'm saying? Nebylem tam yourself. Thanks for nothing. 30 more seconds of that crap. No, it was good. I, I just wanted to see him get closer. Now, let's see if he ever gets... To, no, 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 no. No, never does get closer. End of story, end of video. Still interesting. Don't get me wrong. I like the video. just didn't love it. Oh, so I like to uh, talk to everybody on Twitter, and I haven't been mean. I've been very nice. This person, Lacey M., never seen her, says, I just don't understand skeptics who spend all day mocking believers slash researchers. How pathetic, exclamation point. What an unfulfilled life they must live if this is the only way to get an ego boost. At least professional debunkers or cons conspiracyonist, conspiracyonists who get traffic on their site are paid. So I said, you couldn't be more far from the truth. This is your problem when you don't understand skeptics. No one is mocking anyone. What a pathetic statement by you! Exclamation point. Skeptics are only wanting the truth for an ego boost. Do you hear yourself? Professionals get paid? What an ignoramus. That wasn't my best tweet, but that's all I can come up with. I just think people are weird when it comes to skeptics. She's just echoing what she hears from other people. You could tell. You could tell. So I'm just having a little. I know, that was a waste of time. You're right, waste of time. I hear it in my head. <sighs> All right, here we go. Third phase of moon video. Let me see something. Somebody just sent me a message, and they said I missed something. Bernie Muro. Bernie? Wait a second. Jeanette? I missed Bernie? Bernie Muro? I missed you? Again? See, you sneak him in there when I'm playing stuff, I think. I don't know. But now I have a way to make sure we don't miss him. So I saw it, but I didn't see it yet. There it is. Half hour ago weird but there it is bernie muro everybody it's a super dono two dollar it's a super dono and a continuing supporter of goof on sorry it was so late hey, at least this time i didn't forget right unbelievable how that happens to you more often than i it should than i'd like i was gonna say thank you bernie i really appreciate it man sorry i missed other ones 
but uh, hope that helps. It does. Good. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, all right, here we go. Mick West solved this, but I did immediately. Huh? Mick West solved this, but I did immediately. Oh, I remember this. Remember this, that Mick West was all proud of himself? The Wisconsin Lights. Videos of lights in the sky were promoted that was by just ben a few months ago. the Daily Mail as maybe being some kind of UFO. I thought there were spotlights. So using the video and the rough locations given by Ben, I figured out one good line of sight and another approximate one. They converged near Belgium, Wisconsin. So I emailed the local Chamber of Commerce. They got back to me in minutes saying that there was a light show on County Road B near the Holy Cross Church that had just added some spotlights. This seemed likely, as it was very near where the lines of sight met. So I did a little googling and found the Flanders Family Christmas Light Show. I messaged them to see if they had moving spotlights, and Flanders. yes they did. Oh. They even sent me a video. Their spotlights are on the roof line, and they tilt down towards the location of one of the videos. So it's pretty much a perfect match. So, case solved. Not UFOs, just some spotlights. A fun little investigation. Amazing. How can you get mad at him? See? And and he does more good than bad. Maybe he's a little arrogant. I don't know if it's because of uh, the language that, uh, you know, where is he from? Australia? Wherever? I thought he was Australian. Anyway. I think he's better than cuckold. What's the other guy's cuckold? The cuck? What's his name? God, I can't remember. All right, another Green Street video. I, got, I told myself I have to play this, so let's see why. Oh, yeah. All right, so now it's Green Street's turn. Let's see why everybody was so mad at him after this. It's amazing to me. These guys did nothing wrong but ask the question. You know, look, I, I wish that were true. I really do wish that were true. Verifiably, it is not true. We don't know who are controlling these. This is the this is the issue. Hmm. That's a quick clip from our story earlier this week about UFOs and Pentagon claims the UFOs were drones, likely Chinese, spotted by a Navy ship off of California. That's what the Pentagon. Isn't that what I said for all those years? And I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Listen, John says Stephen Greenstreet of the New York Post had some issues with the segment, tweeting a yoga instructor and karate teacher claims without evidence that the Pentagon is wrong, that the Navy is wrong, and that the real documented evidence is part of a mass deception to cover up USOs. Yeah. Credulous media like at Leland Vitter slurps it up madness. Yeah. Green Street is with us now. Uh, did you watch the whole segment? Because I think we questioned him pretty carefully on this, didn't we? Uh, yeah. And, you know, I actually agree, like, with that statement, the one that you just played, where we still don't know about all of the specifics when it comes to this case. But look, I am I used to, I cover the UFO beat, essentially, at, at the New York Post. And I used to be on board with all of this. And it wasn't until recently, in the last few months, where I realized that something was off. And I, I created a, I, I dove deep and created a uh, documentary film, which essentially shows that the whole UFO story from the last four and a half years is wrong. And the media has been wrong about big details. Well, but, and, but if, we, if we're and wrong would, and there is no UFOs, okay, and this is all just explained or it's a DARPA project or whatever it is, why is it that you've got sitting U.S. congressmen uh, who've been briefed and briefed by the Pentagon in classified situations saying something like this. I think it continues to be a cover-up. I, you know, I don't have the answers, but I'll tell you, they're not providing them. So we can agree the Pentagon's not being forthright, right, Steve? 
Look, I can't speak for the Pentagon, nor do I see any evidence that the Pentagon is not being forthright. This is, comes down to standards of evidence. And look, we heard yesterday uh, or the day before on your show, you know, Jeremy Corbell was talking about like the U.S. Air Force shooting at UFOs and no evidence was provided of this. Well, he, he said he said he talked to people. He said he talked to people on the Navy ship. Uh -huh. that's, what, that's what reporters do, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. But, <laughs> but He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy Corbell's not real. He's not a really a uh, reporter. He's already laughing at this re this guy he's talking to, knowing that Corbell's lying. And, and Green Street almost wanted to say, yeah, yeah, you know, he's not telling the truth here, guy. Look, watch, it's funny be any evidence that the Pentagon is not being forthright. This is, comes down to standards of evidence. And look, we heard yesterday uh, or the day before on your show, you know, Jeremy Corbell was talking about like the U.S. Air Force shooting at UFOs and no evidence was provided of this. Well, he, he said he said he talked to people. He said he talked what? to people on the Navy ship. Oh, yeah, he talked. Yeah. And that's, um, what, that's what reporters do, right? Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> look, uh, this comes down to standards of evidence. You can't. You can't like say the Pentagon is lying to Congress without evidence. Like hearsay is a good place to start, and that's where I started. To be honest yeah, with no, you, that's where I started were the stories. But, but Steve, most, Steve, 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 it's also members of Congress who think the Pentagon's lying. Wouldn't it be our job as reporters to 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 not take the Pentagon anywhere close to it face at face value? Yeah, I think the dichotomy, the breakdown here is that this story has its feet in two places, one in science fiction entertainment and the other foot is in science and military defense. And often that is blurred. And I, and my, what I've discovered is that the, the science, fi science fiction entertainment is fun and entertaining and people love to hear that. It's exciting. And the research... Like when you get into the actual evidence and like the documents, which is where I've spent the last year of my life blowing a lid off this story and, and really boiling it, boiling it down to what you can prove. So what, really what, I, 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 I'll give you the last word. You got 30 seconds. What can you prove? I can prove and I have proved and you can watch on New York Post YouTube site right now that the UFO story that the media has been pushing for the last four and a half years is wrong. UFOs as an unidentified flying object is real. But according to the Navy and the Pentagon and actual documented evidence, uh, we're seeing no, I, I, I've, I've, I've seen all the evidence, but I, I guess we don't leave any room for the idea that the Navy and the Pentagon might be lying to us. Why? About what, Leland? Well, Lying about, about that this is a DARPA project. About that they know a lot more than than we think they do. We've got you've got congressmen who've been briefed by the Pentagon saying that they're covering something up. Well, who briefed them? They said they were, he said he was briefed by the Director of National Intelligence. He said we can't. I can't tell you what I know. Okay. Well, the, the the Director of Naval Intelligence went before Congress and said these are drones. And the photographic well, really, evidence. I understand what he said. I just want to say, why do we believe him? Why do we believe who? I'm sorry. Why do we believe the head of naval intelligence who said conclusively these are drones? If they were UFOs and they didn't want to scare us, wouldn't they say that too? Again, it's not about believing someone or not. It's about verifying. Right. And at this point, this is an ongoing story with ongoing evidence that's coming out. We have to verify this. We can't go on national TV and claim without evidence that they're lying. Well, I, I guess. But they can go on national TV and lie because they know what Stephen Greenstreet just said is very difficult to do. Because it's hard to verify a lie because you can't. That's, you know, so, you know what I mean? The only way you can is if you somehow talk to the people who said they shot at the UFOs or talk to their higher ups and find out, hey, did you guys shoot at some UFOs a couple of months ago? That's the only way. And that's never gonna happen. And Corbell knows that. That's what makes this all so frustrating. Is that you know they're lying, but it's impossible to prove. They are, they're lying. 
Corbell, big time. And let's say they were shooting at UFOs. If he's talking about it, shouldn't there be evidence about it? I mean, the fact that he knows that somebody told him that, why didn't they bring him evidence of something? Again, like Green Street said, start with hearsay. And that's what happened. Yes, we can't claim it, but we can certainly certainly ask it. Hey, Steve, I appreciate you coming on. Feel free to tweet at us anytime and, and, and come back as you uncover more, all right? Right. Alrighty. Yeah, thanks. A good conversation. Thanks for watching. Good. <laughs> That was fun. I like that one. That was a good fiery uh, without being disrespectful conversation. It's the way it should be. Yeah, very interesting. I like Green Street. Don't love him. But I think he's proven himself to the people who want truth that he's on the right side of history when it comes to ufology. I think I, I think I'm right. I think we can trust Green Street. But let's keep one iota. What's that? Oh, one eye open. Uh, where is... This is amazing. What just happened? I can't see how this... Oh, I know why. Hold on, kids. I just want to see... If no into thin air again. All right. Now, we're going to look at this video from last night from third phase of moon because it's really good. I know. And uh, this thing that we're going to see in the beginning. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's it's underwater. Well, anyway, let's just watch it. It's something that we very rarely, if ever, have seen. And we can easily talk about this. This is a good one. IMO. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins, along with my brother Brent, we're going to go over some incredible UFO videos underneath the ocean at over 1,300 feet. Look at this incredible imagery that has been revealed to the public. I've never seen this before until today. That's why we're sharing it with you. Even though it was captured in 2002, is this incredible evidence of an underwater UFO, a USO? But what's your thoughts here? This is incredible. Something. Remember this shape because I'm going to show you something in a minute. Just remember this shape. Okay, so this was taken about a quarter of a mile beneath the water, beneath the surface of the ocean. Can this be, I talked with Third Phase about this, uh, could this be something close up like an eel maybe or, you know, ground suckers, things that eat all the sludge, but it's just close and it looks bigger than it is, I'm not sure. But it's very rigid looking. It's disc shaped if, if you want to go that route. Maybe more cigar shaped, I would say. Cigar shaped, yeah, it is. They call this cigar, I forget. Certain shape, the round tip on both ends. It's... um. Now, at 1,300 feet, you don't get your typical swarm of schools of fish and everything, right? You get the larger, slower, big, big fish, right, that are usually down there. I don't know where sunlight is blocked off completely. But maybe there's no sunlight, quarter of a mile down, so maybe the eyes got to be bigger. And you see a lot of like what we see here, squid Amazing. to the right. Now it's making the waves on the Isn't internet. Isn't that a squid? What's your thoughts? 
Yeah, Blake, this one really caught my eye. Look at this. It's definitely not a lens flare. You can see it going underneath the squid right there. Perfect. Uh, this is not CGI. This is not ma manipulated. This is a real deal. Discover Domestic is involved in this discovery. There Damn stick. You can see how fast it just whips by. Again, you know, when it just flashes by, it almost looked like it had uh, movement like a fish. Did you guys notice that? This is not ma Watch. manipulated. This is a real deal. Discover Domestic is involved in this discovery. Watch. There it goes. You can see how fast it almost it looked like it was by. wiggling. Like Again, there are a small like it didn't just it to, to me. It looked like it went like this, like a very slight like that's how it moves itself. Like if you saw a regular thing, you know, you'd see us even us do the seahorse or whatever you want to call that action. And it looked like this thing projected itself forward and maybe we caught, you know, a part of it just finishing up the move of poof. But objects down at that level, if it's a biological entity, and if it's not from, well, if, if it is from Earth, but if it isn't, then it's got this type of propulsion that we've all heard about where objects can go couple hundred miles an hour underwater without without a, a, a care in the world nothing slowing it down crazy stuff coming out of the water hovering 50 feet above the ocean and then taking off we've heard of that a lot of wild stuff man the ocean is filled with a lot of secrets we'll never know the truth the ocean is where the truth is, I bet. I bet. Biological uh, entities in this depth, but I bet. the way this thing's moving and its propulsion, it could be something biological. Again, we're hearing a lot of possibilities of UFOs in the ocean. Could this be the best capture right here? The transmedium craft uh, in space, in our atmosphere, underwater. Is there a civilization of, of technology, of possible living creatures? that have harnessed uh, technology that is beyond imagination. This is incredible evidence. Again, we got a lot of stuff to go through, so let's get to the next one. Right now at Popocatepetl, it's been very, very busy of video evidence that has come in. Just behold the awesomeness of the phenomenon. I'm gonna jump over this for now. I wanna go to the next one. This is amazing. <laughs> You may have seen this before. This is a new one. I forget what it's called. Third Phase told me last night the name of it. I think they say it in the video. Yeah, they do. They'll... Hey, that looks like Mickey Mouse. You see it? In the sky, the cloud. Look at this. It's Mickey Mouse. There's the nose. Here's the mouth. Here's the eyes. Here's the, the top of the head. It's Mickey's brain thinking. <gasps> maybe this is some, maybe it's a prediction about Disney World. Ooh, wouldn't that be world, really weird if Disney World disappears like it just vanishes? <laughs> Goes back to 1966, seven. When was it born? Here we go. Look at even his eyebrows. Look at that. It's so crazy. It's like his head is. Got a loose hair on the top. And the kids are screaming because they're watching it. They don't understand. Look at that. Isn't that weird? It's alive. It's all energy. Can somebody shut those kids up? I'm filming something. Sorry about that. Hey, get out of here. Come on, I'm trying to film. They don't respect me. Get that out of here! <laughs> Inchworm, yeah, that's interesting. Captain Hook Cloud. Thanks, Tim Freestone. Everybody's excited on the ground. A this teddy bear, yeah, footage. I did see that too. This is a weather phenomenon that third phase of moon broke about eight to nine years ago.
known as the crown flash but i want uh, to say this is one of the best videos of the phenomenon of the crown flash that i've seen crown in a flash time. i dubbed it the bullwhip effect and it looks like a bullwhip uh, just out of the cloud itself it is incredible to Ooh. behold mother nature and that's why we're sharing with you some of the weather phenomenon Ooh. you don't see this every day Brent, what's your thoughts of the crown flash is this something that we're going to see more often or is it going to be as rare as it has been we're, we don't get much of these videos coming in over the decade yeah pretty impressive uh, this one is pretty much in the top 10 i'm going to give it right there in the top five of crown flash events right there Again, you can see the whipping, the cracking of this whip. Like you say, Blake, it's amazing what's going on there. Wouldn't it be great to get a really bird's eye view of it and be in close see proximity that. to see, and even, even a maybe a wind. possibility of hearing the weather phenomenon itself. This thing's very impressive. Very Some of the best stuff I've seen best. in regards to this phenomenon. Absolutely. I wonder if it'd be any around the world we did a special report in moro bay watch this oh this is moro amazing bay, san luis obispo has had ufo sightings coming san luis in. and let me tell you obispo. people are talking about it in this report we're going to do a special investigation in regards to the ufo phenomenon <laughs> that is happening cool that in the area we've spoken to local residents in regards to the phenomenon and they're not afraid of coming forward and sharing their experiences be so very afraid. Into the mystery of Morro Bay and the UFO phenomenon. Are you kidding me? Wow. Beautiful camera they got there. For decades, numerous sightings of strange lights and otherworldly aircraft have been reported in the San Luis Valley, especially in the sprawling expanse west of the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Whether the occurrences are bona fide true happenings, or the curious results of boredom are up for debate. No flashing lights. The sheer amount of reported strange sightings is notable no matter what side of the fence you're on. New Fork reports that an eyewitness said, quote, around July or August of 1964, I was in Morro Bay for summer vacation. I was a teenager at this time. At about 9 p.m., I was out on the beach. I saw a triangular shaped object, very large, out to the west of the coast, moving from north to south. This object was silent. A smaller object, which resembled an airplane, was following the triangle shaped object and was darting back and forth at the rear of the object. I think it was a military aircraft. My father is an aircraft mechanic. All right, you guys can watch the rest of that on third phase. I'll put the link to that video in the show description so you can watch it at your own leisure. I recommend it. There's still another sighting or two after that short little story. So you may want to check it out. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. <clears throat> um, let's take a look at this. Another... Gary Nolan says <clears throat> on Twitter, he posted this. Did I? Oh, right. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I think I said that already. Okay. So Joseph Burks tweeted something about skinwalker mick west replied a skinwalker ranch event supports the virtual experience model dr kelleher colm kelleher was present when six observers using night vision equipment described seeing completely different things illusory mechanisms of contact are discussed Mick West replied saying, if multiple witnesses report seeing different things, is this evidence of A, imperfections in human perception and memory, or B, non-human UFO intelligences beaming different virtual realities directly into different, pe different people's brains? How many times? Have we heard the same event told differently 
People see things differently. It happened with me many times. I'll be standing there video recording something. So it's on the camera. And somebody like my wife, my friend, another researcher would be next to me. And I go, it's right there. And I point and they get behind. I go, I don't see it. And I go, you must be blind. And they're like, I have 20-20 vision. I go, you can't. You can't if you can't see this. I go, go look at my camera. I'm recording it. Holy crap. How do you see this stuff? I don't know, man. Remember, I know it's not your responsibility to remember my life, but I did have 2015 vision for approximately four to five years after I had that LASIK surgery. Two years after I still had 2015 vision, the, the optometrist is like, this is crazy. Usually it dissipates after two to four months. I've never seen it last over three months ever. This is nuts. So every time I'd go into the, you know, for my checkup every three months, because I had four visits for a year, he couldn't believe it. And then I assumed it stayed that way because I was still seeing things that nobody else was seeing. But I also learned that a lot of people don't have good vision and don't realize it. So somebody may see something that can be standing right next to you, and it could be a blimp-sized object for all we know. Because they need glasses, they're going to see something a little different. And uh, somebody right next to you will tell a totally different story. Similar, but the details are way different. Which tells me it's human perception. It's your life experiences. It's your education. Everything comes into play. And we call it critical thinking because it's critical that you get it right. And if you don't get it right, well, there's critical consequences for that. You could be in a court of law and you're a witness to something, maybe a murder, perhaps. And you give the description of the, uh, the perpetrator. He's got a beard. He's got uh, blue eyes, bushy hair. He was wearing a hat, looked like he had a big nose. Interesting. And then they bring in a, a gentleman who has a goatee, dark eyes, very short, crew cut hair, and uh, tattoos all over, were never mentioned. Stuff like that happens. They did a... Uh, I don't know what show it was. I think it was fact or faked. And they faked to do an experiment that a UFO crashed, right? And they had a group of like six people walk by. Two groups went. One group went by and they recreated the same UFO crash. And then when they had everybody, you know, write down what they saw, it was amazing. They even drew pictures that weren't even close to what was really there. It was weird. You guys probably saw that show. Your brain can only take in so much. And what it doesn't need to focus on, it'll get rid of. Have you ever noticed when you watch TV or a movie or even read a book, your eyes are pinpointed on a specific point. You don't, you can't read an entire sentence just by staring at one word unless you have incredible peripheral vision. But it's amazing that we don't get more things wrong. It's why they have replay in major league sports. It's why they have replay in a lot of things. The brain can only take in so much. And then you have to take in the personality of the individual who's owning these tools. <laughs> you know, it's the person. There's so many factors that go into getting a UFO story, right? Very hard to believe any of them. If you only have one person and no witnesses, 
you usually get a really good story. Truthful, probably. But when you get more than one person and they start talking two totally different languages, you're like, are you guys lying to me? I mean, I, what's going on here? Why is she saying it's round and you're saying it's octagon? That's a big difference. Well, round is kind of octagon. Uh-huh. I hear what you're saying, but details matter. Let me draw it for you. And then they draw it. You've seen that done where they do the sketches. Sometimes they look really good. And you know that they're... And usually when things go that way, when the stories corroborate, collaborate, it's collaborate, corroborate, it's corroborating the story. It's, I was right. Here, let's see. Yeah, I see you. Hold on. Somebody drew this. This is interesting. I just happened to segue perfectly into this. It was an accident. The eyes are the windows to the alien soul. So somebody did a, an artist's uh, rendition of alien eyes, the faces of aliens. Check this out. Not a lot. I think it's like 12 or so, three, six, nine. Yeah, there's 12. These are the most common, though. Right? I uh, never seen red glowing eyes. This doesn't this look like Aleister Crowley? <laughs> Here's your classic gray. And then you have your hybrid right here. And then you have your reptilian hybrid mixed with the gray. And then you have your goth rocker mixed bag of tall whites and then you have the uh well you can call them the ant people but some people still call these the uh praying mantis type or reptilian this i'm not sure what is that a humanoid here's a what is this the uh nordic type uh the tall whites, right? Or what are these called? Yeah, mug shots. <laughs> these are mug shots. Yeah, yeah, totally funny. It is raging against machine. <laughs> That'd be funny if they were turned to the side or something, too. I don't know what this bottom left one is. What is that? That is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, man. Even this one down center, that's more of a reptilian water i don't know bottom right corner is jesus it's uncle tony fat fuck tony <laughs> it reminds me of his soul uh but there you go there you, the eyes have it the eyes have it i like this is my favorite one in the middle right here this guy right here that's my favorite of all i don't know it's kind of oriental but Kind of looks like he liked to party a little bit. He's got a normal face right around this area. So I can get used to hanging with this one. More or less, it kind of looks like powder. You know that movie? Kind of reminds me of that. I could deal with that. Oh. Uh-oh. That sounded like it's very, it is important. Let me check this. Stop. I can't wait to get a new phone. I didn't do it today. I was supposed to and I forgot. Get off. I don't want this. It's trying to make me sign up for this thing. Cancel. No. Amazing what it's trying to do. Wow. Wow. That was scary. It was like running my phone over. Hey. Hey, Dinkum. 
I mentioned the one last night at the beginning of the show, the $15. I did mention it because I didn't last night. But Dinkamazi just sent another 10 on PayPal. Cashology for weedology. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I mean, this is beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Ow. I'm not used to beating my hands like that. Yay. Be nice, pigs. All right. Um, we've got a few minutes left. Um, this show wasn't that bad. Feed your mother's ass. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, have some fun. Can we have a little fun? All right, you got to see this. I This is something that might happen in my life soon. I may do this on the road. Um, when anytime somebody is asked, how is Trump a fascist, a fascist, fascist, he's a fascist. How is he racist? How is he a misogynist? And people will say, he just is. He just, but how, where? Explain. Nobody can. And here's a, the most excellent example of, uh, of that. Mussolini without the brains or the charm. Mussolini. Let that sink in. Do you know who that is? Yeah, of course. Why, no why, why, do, why do you think you Mussolini? No idea, why do you think Mussolini? You have, you have no idea what fascism is. Can you explain fascism to me uh, that, that you're talking about, just so we're, we're on the same page here? What is fascism? I'm going to get the tequila. Come back here and I'll explain that to you. Well, but you don't want to explain it to me. Is, am I getting this correct? Correct. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying he's a fascist. You're telling me that I don't understand what fascism is, and you're refusing to tell me what fascism is. Is that correct? Not refusing, no. You're you're simply refusing to explain here's what only, fascism is why. to me. And, you know, if I whatever. had to guess, because if I had to guess, I don't. Camera, no, it has if to I had to guess, with, I don't think you know what fascism is. It has to do with is. time. It has to do with the amount of time that I have, the amount of time that you have, and fundamentally, you can explain fa fascism in three the fact words. That you wouldn't you wouldn't fully grasp it anyway. So you know. <laughs> Thanks for your time. <laughs> you wouldn't understand it. It'd go over your head. Explain it to me. Ah, you wouldn't get it. I love that stuff. Mm-mm-mm. 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 What was it? There's something I'm thinking. I had something I had to talk about or show you tonight. There was something I had to do. And I can't figure out what it is. I think this might be it. So let me take a look at this. Eye in the sky. It's another one of those things in the sky. This is amazing. This is another new one. The thing that we just saw in the cloud, somebody else captured it. A different one. Look at it moving. Are these things becoming more... See the light in the clouds? Visible now? I mean, I don't get it. I never saw these things till like five, four or five years ago. Third phase has seen these from eight or nine years ago. It's supposed to be a natural phenomenon, but it's bizarre, isn't it? Some people think it's harp. Some others think it's Project Blue Beam, which kind of looks like. It might be, right? So wild. What's this up here? See that ball? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that was a different one. What do they call those? Fata Morgana? They called it an eye in the sky. I am the eye in the sky. Maker of fools. I can read your mind. 
All right, let's see what I got for you. You never stop and wake anymore. You thought about a big body falling, leaving sun in your eye. It's all I've got because I'm bleeding. I am the eye in the sky. <laughs> all right, let me see here. We've just got a few minutes left. What can I do? Oh, wait. Do I have cemetery stuff? Can I show the cemetery stuff? I have a cemetery video that I think you guys would. It's for the members, though, so I can't do that. It's a good video. Tombstones, baby. I don't think I have anything for you guys. That's a shame. No, I do, but I don't. I don't want to show that right now. I've got, a, like, a lot of this stuff. I don't know. Not, I don't know. I, I want to save it for the projects. So I'm going to bring this up. We're going to go back a little bit. We're going to go back a bit. Okay. I'm going to take you on a little ride. Just because. And I am not sure what's going on. It's taking forever to play. I don't get it. There we go. All right, here we go. Ready? Five. Oh, I got to get music too. We'll use a little bit some different, but the same. You guys know all these songs. I'll have to change them all out tonight. All right, here we go. For your entertainment, the last five minutes goes to this. Control, this is flight. We're tracking three fast moving objects, uh, origin unknown. Come on. Come on, move. Go! Go somewhere. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill myself. Move! Yay! Jesus! Oh my god! Move over it. Oh, stop playing with the light. Oh, what am I doing? This is the worst video ever. This video blows. Every time I go there, it stops. I'm gonna get We're sick. Three fast moving objects, uh, hey, there's some people down here. Control, this is flight. We're tracking three fast moving objects, uh, origin unknown. This is the worst video I think I've ever seen. This is the worst video I've ever seen.
Sorry, I didn't think that video was going to be bad, but it was awful, just awful, and I apologize for that. I should be taken out in the back behind the house and taught a lesson. Where's Lou when you need him? Oh, that's it for tonight. <laughs> That's it. I got to get going. The Suns are on. They're going to be playing the second half, and I don't have a DVR, so I got to get going. But thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Mucho gusto, generoso, moderators and super chatters. Can't do this without your help. Thank you, everybody, for that, really. And uh, newcomers and the veterans, thank you very much. I saw some new subscribers. So we are at 10,854. Isn't that nice? First time we've ever been to 854, and it happened on May 1st. Isn't that interesting? I think maybe they released something to let some subscribers come my way. <laughs> Who cares? Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on YouTube. We do it, and we do it all the time. What? What do you mean, what? You know what? It's truthology for ufology. <gasps> What's going on? <laughs> truthology for ufology. That's what's going on. We'll see you tomorrow night. Enjoy each other. Be kind to your friends and family. And just be yourself. Because nobody else wants to be you. Why? Because you do it the best. That's why we love you. Alien bless. Be careful out there. It's a joke. Unidentified flying objects.